Well, we came to Helena um, in 1974. Um, we'd been potters in and had a, a studio in Sandpoint, Idaho, but we came over here for supplies. And the Archie Bray Foundation um, was well known to us. Uh, a lot of history there, and um, we one of our one of our times that we came over, um, we applied to be residents, and we were accepted. So um, we weren't going to be coming for six months. So we we drove through the neighborhoods, um, kind of looking for a place that that we could live, and um, something that we could afford, and we ended up on. South Rodney Street, and uh, as we drove by, we saw this cute little house, and there was an older lady out on the on the porch, and uh, Richard said, "Let's stop and ask her if she wants to sell her house." So we did, and she said yes, she wanted to sell her house, and she would add us to her list. <laughs> and so we went back to Sandpoint. And uh, it was a couple months later, we got a phone call from Selma St. Clair, and she said, I'll sell you our, um, I'll sell you our house, my house. Um, she was an older lady. Uh, she was needing to move to a, you know, a smaller place. Uh, her husband had had a claim. Her husband was deceased, but he had a claim up Rodney, um, Davis Gulch, and we don't really know the story of that, but that's the little bit we know about that. And at the time, it was not a sought-after neighborhood. When um, my cousin, and who lived here, um, heard that we bought on Rodney Street, it was like, oh, that's a bad neighborhood. Um, but we loved it. We loved the location. We were up in the hills. And dangerous neighborhood, according to the secretary at the Bray at the time, just thought that was just too dangerous a neighborhood for her family to live in. And so, um, you know, the, I guess the jesters and the Red Meadow um, were rough enough bars that the reputation of Rodney Street was a little shady. Extended <laughs> further up than those bars, though. But there were some cool aspects to that little neighborhood. The, what is now the laundromat was, of course, Rodney Street News, and they had a little soda fountain in there, and magazines and newspapers, and, and um, so they had a, a nice soda bar, and an older gentleman ran it. Anybody seemed older at that time who had white hair, and um, um, yeah. It, it was a fun little neighborhood and still is. We decided we wanted to remodel our house and we'd torn out maybe a wall or two, pl plaster and lath. And um, at some, some point, some, we'd seen something that triggered us and said, well, let's go up a story. And so we, we looked at what was being done, not what was being done, but historically there were a few mansard roofed houses in town. And we decided we'd build a mansard roof. And I took that lath and the lath from the lath and plaster and ripped it down into miniature two by sixes and built a model of it like this, um, of the total framing of it. And then I took it down to the, um, permit department and they said looks good and so it was the no architect involved and no no um, drawings just a, um, a scale model of a house <laughs> of a roof of a house <laughs> and um, so we were trying to keep the historic aspect of it the upstairs windows when we put them in a lot of, a lot of the houses have those little eyebrow kind of um, wood inserts with a decorative scrolling inside of it. And so we did that. Yeah, well, and, and the house already had that. They already had the that lower, in the lower stories. Lower level. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so. I think, I think it, 
really prompted us having that strange floor plan um, to start remodeling. And one of the things on the south side, um, there was a bathroom with a really high window in it. And also on the south side, um, there were a couple higher windows. There was a little um, fireplace there. Um, so we weren't getting our south view. And, um, or sunshine, yeah. Or sunshine, right. So we decided to, um, the bathroom went out, you know, because there was already another one downstairs, if you can believe the house had two bathrooms. <laughs> um, and we put in two long windows um, so that we could actually see the mountains from, from our house. We didn't have to go outside. <laughs> Um, and that kind of started everything. Maybe, yeah. yeah. It's a long time to remember. I can remember being up on the scaffolding with a masonry saw, cutting into brick, thinking this is crazy. But we did it in a way that it looked like it belonged with the house. And again, put the eyebrow, kind of little decorative inserts in. And so yeah. it looks, still looks like an old house. <laughs> well, actually we sold that house that we're talking about. And we had, after we opened up and we could see our view, we started to think, well, we need to protect our view, and we started to buy the lots as we could afford all the there way were, up to the next house, which is... The lots were like bought lots. for taxes. Nobody wanted them. And so, you know, somebody had paid 10 bucks or whatever to, <laughs> for the right to own that lot. So we kind of pieced that together and built a studio to uh, on that property and then eventually another house attached to the studio. Um, and we've, we have, we've had yearly sales in the house since we left. We were at the Archie Bray for two years, or Penny was there for two years, I was there for a little less. And then we started having spring and um, Christmas sales of ceramics. And um, still have a showroom at the house. Yeah, he's talking about the both of the houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we started out um, with the studio in the basement of of the original house, and that's where we had our sh our shows too for many years. People came in and walked through our living room and <laughs> down the stairs. Um, and so now we have our we have some sculpture. I started doing larger scale outdoor sculptures, and um, so those are those are on the property. Why do I like it? Um, we are in the best place in town. We can walk right up into the hills from our place. We can walk downtown. Um, earlier on, when there was a cinema down right downtown where the base camp is, we could go walk down to the movies. Um, and now we can walk to the Myrna Loy and. Walk to several restaurants, good yeah. restaurants. We can look out over the valley. We, we can look up the gulch. Um, for years and years, um, we were at the end of the line pretty much, except for Upper Rodney it has some older houses up there. That's the really steep hill that goes up above. But yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, well, I like it that it's just so eclectic. It's it's not like you can't predict what the next house is going to look like on Rodney Street. Could be anything, from a new house to a really um, just a old funky house to a nicely remodeled house. So there's all of that. I I think um, that since we have moved there, that the neighborhood um, has. Uh, people have moved in that really appreciate the neighborhood, um, and it's it has become sought after because of its location. And I think the na you know there's a lot of neighbors that are looking out for each other, and uh, you know good people, <laughs> good place to live. Well, I I hope it keeps developing in a positive way. We do have, like you mentioned, some some very old buildings that aren't being taken care of. And I'm hoping that somebody who can afford it could um, buy those, maybe 
update them or take them down and, and uh, put something even better there. Um, there's, there's a lot of, of that um, on Rodney Street, um, plus a lot of, <laughs> a lot of good things on, on Rodney Street. Um, so I'm, ho I'm hoping that it just keeps getting better and better, I guess.